life, so, dude. Right, right, be- right before we started, you you said the term un or no fr- free agent guitar player. Free, yeah, free agent guitarist. Free agent guitarist. I like. He was going to say unrestricted free agent. No, I almost said undrafted. I that too. <laughs> I, no, that nobody holds active. me down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no restrictions here. Yeah. So uh, let's first let's name the bands that you've been in in the St. Louis scene. So Skyburnt White, of Wolves yep. and Whiskey. Yep. Guilty. Uh, anything else before them? I was in a band uh, called Adler for a while. I was in a band called okay. Stone Dog Diaries for a while. Okay. Three of the four of those were with Gabe Stroop and some of the other members that kind of interchanged between Adler, Skyburnt White, and Stone Dog Diaries. I yeah. met you during the Adler days. Yes, you did. Yes, that you was, did. God, that feels very we're young. Ago. Don't get me wrong. So, so we're the, young, those, yeah. but it feels yeah. so give me long. Give me a time. <laughs> give me a timeline here. Like what, what years is this? What's what years are Adler? Probably 05, 05, 06. 06 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. five, oh six. When we got our start, we, and then it was lasted until about maybe the beginning of 07. It was very short lived that band. Yeah. And I, then went I didn't know who right you, into, I, we had, we played, that was when the, the side, the small stage at pops was hot. That's when they would yep. always have bands on that stage. Yep. Thursday. And night we, uh, down. yeah, exactly. We, we ended up yep. playing one of those with you. I didn't know who you guys were. And I remember somebody mentioning, uh, cause I would, you know, anytime you, those days, if you booked a show and you saw bands, you would ask around like, Hey, do you know this band? Like, who are they? Oh what yeah. They sound absolutely. like, cause you know, YouTube wasn't readily available and you could right. just look up a band and be like, Oh, there's their sound. So yeah. If they didn't have a around. demo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, you were, you were screwed. If they weren't passing out CDs outside of pops, you didn't know who they were. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I just remember asking around. Yeah, we're playing the show and Adler's on it. Have you guys ever heard of them? And finally, uh, one of the guys, fuck, it's going to take me forever, to, so I'm not going to take the time to think about who it was, but had played with you, maybe it, it wasn't Pops, maybe Creepy Crawl or one of those places. Mm-hmm. And Yeah. But yeah, that's when I met you. Yep. That was, God, so crazy. Thursday night throwdown. Was it a Thursday night throwdown? It, it probably was, was a Thursday night throwdown. Like $2 dollar bushes sure. or whatever they did. <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would not doubt that we had an ungodly amount of like some sort of tequila or Jaeger shop before we would go yeah. on stage yeah. just because that's what we did. So was that just all local bands? What was Thursday Night Throwdown? Yeah, usually just local bands. Yeah. And it okay. would be like maybe, f- I don't know, five or so. Yeah, and, four uh, or five usually, yeah. yeah. And I don't and it was... know if it was a competition, really. I don't think it was. No, it wasn't. It was just, no, it was just kind of like hanging out. And I don't even know. I don't even know if they ask you to sell tickets. I think it was sort of like, let's just promote. Yeah. Like promote yeah. it and try to get people here. I think the show Which, was only like $5 anyway. Yeah. 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 Totally. Was it, was it normally yeah. a pretty packed house still? Depends. Yeah. Depends. Yeah, I think, I think, it, yeah. If I'm remembering that, I mean, I don't know. Everything Actually, back then th- was so hit and miss, you yeah, know? Yeah. I mean, it yeah. still kind of is with the St. Louis yeah. scene. Yeah. With any music. Any, yeah especially any. those days when they there wasn't a promoter that was like i want you to sell 50 tickets you know right like and i don't think those shows were like that i think it was like oh we booked a show bring your friends and we'll see what happens right because the, the those days of pops was kind of like the wild west as far as like people would get there at seven and stay till 6 a.m that's oh, everything oh yeah. you know yeah so it was a good time it's good time. it was a very good time i don't well, remember any of it but <laughs> we've talked about in the, in the past like about like battle for point fest point fest and stuff like that like how bands don't do what they used to do to get people there like i mean it's been pretty uh pretty scarce on a lot of these bands when they're playing at pops to do mm-hmm. the battle i don't know yeah. have you seen the the pictures from the shows and stuff like there's not a whole lot there i don't know what they're i don't know if they're still basing it on attendance on who's winning these or not, but you know, I think that uh maybe now more than ever, it might be the hardest to try to get anybody to come to a local show, especially. Yeah. Um why do why do you, you know, say that? I'm curious. I, I say that because it was already hard to begin with, you know, getting people outside of your friend group, getting sure. trying to, you know, gather fans more and more. You know, your goal is to get outside of your friend group, you know, to get more and more people to where you can, you know, 
locally sell out of pops or, you know, something of that nature. But I think now with where COVID kind of led us, the convenience of the internet being able to pretty much see that band on a whim anytime that you want. Uh, I think it just makes people less like they don't have the oomph to, you know, to just go out and maybe go see seven, eight bands that they've, you know, never seen before. Yeah. I mean, it, that's all. Yeah. And even before the internet and before social media, that was always a challenge too, because you didn't even have, you didn't have that crutch. You know, we had Chris Kurd on here, you know, Chris, right? Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. uh, we were talking to him. We were just kind of reminiscing on the days of like hanging up flyers at vintage vinyl and walking down the loop and handing out demos mm -hmm. and sitting outside yeah. the pageant and sitting outside pops and having people with a disc man that had like two songs yep. that you just recorded yep. and you just you know, played it. You want to, you want to listen to 30, just give it 30 seconds, you know, yeah. talking to, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that the, the hustle is completely different now. It is. Sure. I don't know if there is a hustle anymore. I think the hustle now is, content you know make yourself mm -hmm. look cool on the internet make yourself look cool on social media and attract people that way right. which is good which is great love it absolutely i think it's a different if it's, it's a different animal my i guess one of the last shows we talked about this i kind of go well i still don't know if that should sort of inhibit your ability to push tickets you know what i mean like i felt yeah. like and i don't mean that in a negative way you know, I, I think what, what you do is try to find, and again, I don't have the secret recipe. I'm not saying right. that, but I, you got to find a way to kind of combine the two worlds if you can. You know, I, I was telling Cole, like, anytime I played a show, it was always like, well, I don't want to play in front of any, no one. So I'm going right. to bust my ass. Right. And right. I know, I'm sure I was annoying to friends and family. And I'm sure I was annoying on social media once I had that opportunity to kind of push tickets on that as well. But you know, I want to bring people like, what are you going to do? You got to, you got to yeah. be annoying. You got to persevere. You oh, got to be persistent. Like 100%. I've been on, I've been in bands that have been on both sides of the spectrum where one band hustled and did everything they possibly could to sell every last ticket, go to pops, get more tickets, sell all of those. You know what I mean? Do yeah. everything that we could. And then I've been in bands where we were just tired and we just bought our own tickets <laughs> and we just paid for our own slot. You know, and then sure. we just we just sold what we could, yeah, to make any sort of money back, just because, you know, you get to be, you know, family. You, you get fam more family oriented. You get to be busier. I don't know. the The hustle just kind of goes in a different direction, you know. Yeah. So I just, I think that's where our mindset was, then, you know. When you're saying buy your own slide, you're talking about the battles. No, I, I mean like those any show where you you get, you know, here's a hundred tickets, you know, and you just, oh, okay. just gotcha. selling them, you know, be a, to be on a a Friday night or you know an opening right. act for whoever, you know, we would just pay for the tickets and then sell what we could. Sure, you know? sure. Not saying that that's right anyway. I think that it's just different perspectives. Totally. And there, you know what, there are a lot of bands that move from that to like, we don't even think we should be selling tickets, just book us and we'll play, you right. know, you know, I was always like, if you want us to sell tickets, I'm going to push the fuck out of them and we'll see what happens. You know, I, yeah. I, I didn't really, I never cared. Like I never worried about selling tickets, meaning like I never like pushed back at the idea, but at some point you go, well, how many times can we play in the city before it's not the same group of people coming yeah, to see didn't they you just know? play yeah didn't they just play last month yeah, or yeah. whatever you know it's any excuse. i would always preach i would always preach to people like hey stick around for everyone else please because that's the whole idea you know and that was what that's when it becomes frustrating is you know we sell 100 to 200 tickets to a show and the other bands don't so then like yeah. we play our people stay and watch us play and then they leave no, like, no, no, stick around. But wait, wait, the other bands didn't bring anyone. So now we're, it, it's, it's like a, a weird cycle of nonsense. It's like, you want, like, you want everyone to stick around for everyone, but it just wasn't like that at times. It became right. very frustrating, but yeah, I get it. I agree. I agree. Yeah. The, ba the battles, do you remember when those were, I don't know if you ever played one, but on Sunday nights and cornbread would uh, go live from those and oh, shit. Oh yeah. Oh Yeah. 
dude i, I yeah, tried telling we, him about this and he doesn't believe so, me he's just i would just be like dude it was a dude, giant party like yeah. all band dudes came out like everyone came out like there was dude, no cornbread. competition please like, don't cuss please yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. don't cuss yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we go totally. on air yeah totally. you know, i love dude yeah i miss I those believe, i can't believe the station even let him do it oh yeah it's just bizarre the crowd that people, would be around him yeah. you know? people would cuss all the time yeah, those were those were those were fun times, and, and it felt like the camaraderie was there as well amongst bands. I more definitely so agree. than ever, you know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Let's I feel like that was a that was kind of a a weirdly special time in the music scene. It just kind of felt like everybody was buds. Everybody knew everybody, and even whenever you were a band that didn't really know any, anyone, like by the end of the night, like everybody was mm-hmm. cool with. Every, you know what I mean? It was just just even flow everything was like ebb and flow like that yeah Yeah. i think he had a lot to do with that too man i I honestly do like i think he he was sort of the glue that kind of kept everyone together when it came to that because you did like you know i was in a i remember one i did you know every band on the show was heavy and it's like metal dudes Mm -hmm. and i'm like ah these dudes are not gonna like me at all (laughs) and uh I remember he he would do like in the beginning he would do like his little like let me gather all the bands and do like his little like here's what's going to happen tonight type deal. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. He kind of put everyone at ease and it kind of made you feel better about the situation. And, you know, yeah, but yeah, it was good times. And he was always often a a really good mediator. Like, Hey, have you met so-and-so? Hey, have you met this guy? You know what I mean? Like always just connecting people. Yeah, absolutely. I forgot. I forgot of that. He did that as well as he did because it's been so long since he's had the opportunity to do it. He could still do that. today. Oh, he could still do it today. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, he was really good about that. Was he in any other bands besides Brook Royal back back then, or has that just been the band? You know, I what band was he in? I, I honestly yeah, don't I know. mean, he was, but I don't think it was like it was definitely not. It was never as serious as Brook Royal was. Right. The name Twelve Summers Old comes to mind, but I know he wasn't in that band. But I feel like it was a band like. Do you remember Twelve Summers Old? I definitely remember Twelve yeah. Summers Old. <laughs> I think it was a band like that, if I'm okay. remembering correctly, but I can't remember what they were called. But he was from a different world. Like, uh, he lived in Illinois and was from Illinois. Like, I yeah. was oblivious to Illinois until like 25. Yeah. Even though I yeah. was going to like Sage when I was 21. You're, like, I still right. didn't know anything about anywhere else in Illinois. Right. But yeah, yeah, he was doing something. I can't remember. You know, I was actually surprised when he, um, cause I played with Brooke Royal. Their first show was a point fest. Yeah. And uh yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, I remember going, wait, what? You're playing? <laughs> Holy shit. Cool. I remember I remember Jack telling me whenever the band was in its kind of infancy stage. Uh so he had asked Bond originally at the very beginning to be in Brook Royal, and Bond for whatever reason wasn't able to. So he asked me. And this is whenever Adler was kind of like I didn't know it then, but Adler was in the beginning of the end. And uh, I passed it up just because I was loyal to Adler. I wanted to just keep doing that. And then he went with a guy named, I think, Kyle Brooks, who Mm -hmm. was with them for a little while. And then subsequently ended up getting Bond anyway, which worked out for the better. You know? Sure. So, but yeah. 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 Kyle was in the fifth element with Jack. Yep. Way back in the day. And that's how I met Jack way back in the day was I was in a band called Means Well. Which turns out yeah. Ryan Ryan Phillips from Story of the Year actually had a side project named Meanswell. And I was like, just happened to be at the same place as him one time. And we were talking about that. And he was like, You're in a band. And I was like, Yeah, we're in a band called Meanswell. And he's like, get the fuck out of here. I had a band called Meanswell. And I was like, no shit. And then we just kind of yep. had that little for a second. But going back to just coincidentally, you both had a band that were that was the same team. One hundred percent co- like total coincidence. Sure. Total coincidence. And that's, we just kind of, we just kind of talked for a second. You know, I've never really, I didn't ever really know Ryan Phillips or anything that we just had it. We were just right place, right time. Talked about this for a second. Then it was like, Oh, no way. Okay. And that was about it. But uh, I saw means well at Baja rock club. Me buddy. I was in that. I was in that group. Yeah. Didn't even realize that until just now. That is how we got uh, the, that show is how we got on a fifth element show. I remember. And that, like we opened up, I think it was like us modern day hero. If you remember yep. them, yep. Oh, those dudes were yep. so good. Yep. Uh, and I can't remember. There was another band 
and then it's when yeah, Brooke Royal yeah. released this uh, the CD that had the piano intro on it, right? Yep. Or not Brooke Royal? I mean the Fifth, fifth element. element. Yeah. 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 Jesus. There, yep. were, was a... there, were, there was a band. There was a band out of St. Louis called Modern Day Hero, and a band out of St. Louis called yes. Modern Day Zero. Yep. Yes. Yep. Weird. Modern Day Hero had Joe, who was in. He ended up joining. So they say, and then yeah, and like, he was yeah, in yeah. Losers Luck for a little while. He was you in remember Losers them? Luck for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Jesus. What a trip down memory lane. I know, buddy. man. Well, I think, Mario, I, I seen a, a post you had made on Facebook a little while back. I think it was right after 2005 came out, the new story of the year song. Mm-hmm. And you had, you had basically were, were just praising the song and being like, we just, we need to go back there. Oh, like, dude, need, I, it, that, that song, was the time, you know, I, I, I am not ashamed to admit that I 100% cried like a little baby whenever I heard that song <laughs> because it just took me. The whole song has the feeling and the video, especially if you watch the video mm-hmm. of all of, I mean, just that time. Like I remember that warp tour, whenever the whole warp tour was empty because everyone in St. Louis that was at that warp tour went to the stage where story of the year was going to play, mm-hmm. you know? And that was that time Pat, that we were talking about where like the, the local scene was like starting to, everybody was like really starting to vibe with each other. And the, feeling of everything being a competition was kind of going away you know what i mean and i don't know it just was a really special time i feel like in music and you know no doubt for that band but yeah yeah i don't like that's when i started um i really didn't do anything before that so i didn't know about competition before that so i kind of entered the game into no competition i just kind of entered into this kind of like awesome pool of bands who all kind of partied and were, were cool and then like around 06 07 it got a little bit weird you know story yeah. story was already signed and they were successful and i felt like i've talked about this before i felt like there were a lot of bands who tried to do the story of the year model and it failed for them so then they became sort of resent you know they had this resentment towards story and like how to get out of st louis or whatever and i was just like hearing you know these bands talk about this and i'm like guys just do your own thing like yeah. it, it'll it'll come if it does like you know i there there was no there was no magic button you yeah. know there was not and i felt like so many bands felt like they deserved the magic button and you know you know you know as well yep. as i do so it's like and you probably i mean to be honest with you i've been in a couple of those bands where they're just sort of like well it's just gonna happen because we deserve it i'm like no i don't know about that it's gonna happen yeah. because we work for it but like i don't know no, I, I, I agree that there, there I've been in bands that kind of, for lack of a better phrase, almost had like a sense of entitlement, like, oh yeah, this will just, it's just going to happen. You know, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and it's just yeah. going to happen rather than, you know, actually treating it like it is, which is a business and you just have to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep big, getting, you know, keep thinking bigger. You know, it's just, it's, but you're, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah, I think I for me too, personally, I was always such a self-hating shithead that I was like, I'm not good enough yet. So I know yeah. it's not going to happen. Like, I know it's not going to happen yet. I'm not good enough. I got to get better. And, I, and that's because like, you know, a lot of the dudes I met, they're like, oh yeah, I've been uh, playing a band since I was 15. I'm like, fuck, I didn't join a band until I was 22. Like I, I didn't, right. it never crossed my mind. Yeah. I wanted to, but I never did. Right. Uh, I, I mean, you know I what was, I mean? Like, yeah, I, I would say. 16, 17 was whenever I was cutting my teeth at the, at the old creepy crawl. Wow. On Tucker. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely not. Yeah. I was, I mean, I was, you know, it, it, when you think about it, I mean, I was kind of a baby, you know, around all these punk rock dudes who are, you know, yeah. they're just, everything's oh, fuck you. And there's vomit everywhere and shit. And oh, there, just, there was, know, there like, was AIDS in that bathroom, dude. Oh dude. It was awful. <laughs> awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awful. You didn't was, even have a were, door. Yeah. Just look yeah. at me pissing. Yeah, everybody. Sixteen-year-old yeah. me yeah. trying not to get AIDS. Sixteen-year-old me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just trying to dodge AIDS. Yeah, see, I was completely yeah. opposite of that, man. When I was sixteen, I was like, "There's no way I would ever." I couldn't even imagine. Like, I was playing by myself in my room, but couldn't imagine playing with a group of guys and getting on stage. It's just like yeah. beyond my imagination. Speaking of creepy crawl, was the old? So there was two of them, right? So this. Yes. Was it the same owner of both? Mm-hmm. That yeah, I was just yeah. Saying that it was uh, what was his name? Um, 
He was always shit faced and would pass out on the floor. Um, <laughs> Bob, who that I think sound... it was, I think it was Bob. Uh, I can't remember his last name. I think it was so Bob. Was, the, was the second one bigger? Did they outgrow the first one? Is that why we went to a second one? What was the reasoning for the first one shutting down? Maybe, you know? maybe the first one just got condemned, bro. I don't know. Yeah, like all, all the aids in the bathroom. Yeah, it was I pretty. Think, I think an investor came in and purchased the building that the the first one was in because right that next door sense. was a restaurant. Yeah, and then up above, I think there was like office space, and then like apartment space or whatever. Yeah, like living space. Um, and you know the one they moved to, it just didn't feel right. It just you know it was cool. It was loved cool, playing, and it, it sounded loved, great. Yeah, but it just didn't feel. The same, you know, I have now, a funny, uh, oh, go ahead. You're, go I was ahead. just going to say, I have a funny story about the, the first creepy crawl. So there, you remember uh, if either of you guys remember a, a, an early back in the, I guess it was like early two thousands pop punk band called homegrown. Yes. I don't. Okay. They were on drive through for a little while. So they played, it was like them sugar cult yellow card. It was just an unbelievable, like bands that you didn't know, like we're going to go on to be like a little bit bigger. Right. At the creepy crawl at just this small little venue. So I'm sitting there chatting and I see the lead singer of uh homegrown and his name's Johnny Trash. <laughs> Johnny Trash. And uh he we're just talk talking, shooting the shit. Then fast forward a couple of months later, warp tour comes through, and I'm just walking with a friend, and he goes, Hey, I know you. And I stop and I look over, and Johnny Trash remembered me, this little eight, you know, like 18, 19 year old kid like from the creepy crawl and we just had a conversation and that was back whenever they had just installed Pat. You remember the chain link fence that separated the 21 mm -hmm. and up section. Yep. Yeah. Like a yeah. yard fence. Yeah. <laughs> like it was a, a yard fence yard, for sure. Yard <laughs> fence. Yeah. Yeah. And we we're just talking over the fence and he remembered me. I just thought that was so cool. I don't know. Silly thought. It was a little, I was just start, not really starstruck, but like, it was just the amount of people that those, you know, you know, the amount of people that you talk to when you're in a band to be a fan of, someone else and then they remember you the next time that you see them you know and they actually point you out i don't know it just made me feel special right? yeah i know that's cool and there's no avoiding that like talking to people in that place because it was so small and so intimate right. and you honestly like the bands would park their vans out back as, as a fan you could walk back there no one's stopping you no you know it's either they lock themselves in the van and don't come out or they come out and be like all right that kid's obviously here to talk to me let me go ahead and not be a dickhead and say hello but yeah no one was going to stop you Right. You know, that, that that place didn't have security. There was a door guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bartenders. But like, other than that, like, that's it. So, yeah. So it was the original Creepy Crawl that Story did the Until the Day I Die music video, mm -hmm. though, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thought so. And, and they made the it look a lot better than it was. Yeah, they really <laughs> did. They made it look really like a rock star club. I mean, it still looks shitty, but it looked better than it was. <laughs> right, right. You mentioned you mentioned Sugar Cult. Is that the band Memory? Was that their big song? Is that the band uh, thing that I'm thinking of? Yeah, and then Bouncing yeah. Off the Walls was another one that they had. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. Remember that one or not? Pretty much the entire uh, Van. What was it? Uh, Van Wilder. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm bouncing off the walls again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Patrick, yeah, memory was a good you're one. You're looking too. it up. I can see. I am totally. <laughs> anyway, so you you mentioned Van Wilder. You know who uh, the the movie is set after, correct? E Mario. Yeah, isn't it Burt Kreischer? Yeah. 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 I That's crazy. Up, I, I bring this up on purpose because Patrick wants to talk about Burt Kreischer and the new movie. Okay. He, he is a uh, completely just in love with it, right? Is that, is that the case? So sure. I, I haven't seen it. But I don't care about spoilers. Oh, we, it we doesn't matter. Oh, I haven't seen it. Either. None of that. Either. Okay. We won't. We won't. I, I was kidding. He's uh. Okay. He's he's had a thing out for Burt Kreischer for a long time. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Patrick's back, so now uh, it's a good time. You can jump in and tell us how much you hate Pat McAfee now. <laughs> I don't hate him. <laughs> I dislike his show, and I dislike that approach to sports. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not with the bar stool. I'm not with the bar stool generation of sports fans. And I don't know that he necessarily fits into that. He might not. Right. As soon as I saw AJ Hawk blow cigar smoke into the camera for the first time, I was like, I'm out. 
on the show. <laughs> I hate that. It's like my biggest pet yeah. peeve. Yeah, I, 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 oh, I was listening to you guys. Sorry, I wasn't creeping, but um, I was on mute. But, you know, I was listening to what you said about being a fan and kind of him going, you know, him talking about, well, I'll never do an ESPN deal because I'm, you know, I've built this entity. And I always mm-hmm. sort of, I was always sort of like, well, that's cool, but name your price. Everyone has a price. He does. But I don't fault him for that, though, man. But I think the shitty thing that you did say was, what about his employees? But so that's, I yeah, do that's, question, what do those know, employees he, really do? He says that nothing's going to change and the show's not going to change, which I could believe whether or not, you know, whatever. I, like, you have a show where you constantly throw the F-bomb around, and then now you just signed with a company that's owned by Disney. I'm sorry. I th- kind of think that they're going to limit the amount of that you're going to be able to say. So yeah. already you're not going to be able to speak freely. Right. And so yeah. you're already changing the show in my mind because you're not able to just be yourself. You're going to have to be conscious of like the words that you say constantly. Yeah. Anytime and, you go to a network like that, your content's being put through a filter regardless exactly. of, you know, when uh, Rogan signed with Spotify, you know, That's people were like, oh, this is great. Yeah. He's not going to get censored. He has all the, no, he doesn't. They pulled yeah. all these episodes out. Like, no, it's not. And he still talks about that when someone on the show will ask him about it. Like, oh, it's great. Like, they let me do what I want. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> that's, that's not true. Where are your episodes with Gavin McInnes? Where are your episodes with, uh, you know, Milo? Like, all these people, like, all these right wing people you had on in the early days, you can't find those. And right. you can't find them on YouTube anymore either, which I find even funnier. Right. Uh, it's you almost like there's them? a conspiracy. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'll look again, but I mean, last time I checked, but. Um, so yeah, anytime you sign with a company like that, you're going to get censored in a way, but you know, like you said with the, those employees, my question was always like, why do you need so right? What do they actually do? It, it's like the <laughs> bar stool mentality that I'm talking about, where it's like, yeah. you fill a room with people. With buddies. And just be- yeah. Yeah. And it, it becomes sort of like, I think that the, the appeal of it is like, it's a big hangout. Whereas and and so your viewers are looking at it like, Oh man, I wish I was a part of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Barstool does this really bizarre thing. And I don't know who I, I brought it up during the the baseball playoffs last year. Um, And I didn't know they did this until uh, I saw it last baseball playoff season. But so like, I'm a guardians fan. And um, after they won a game four in Cleveland, it was a big deal. They wanted, you know, an extras. And so what Barstool does is they'll take a group of guys that work there who are fans of a team They'll put them in a room with fans of the team that that team is playing and they'll just do a live stream. Right. Right. But it won't be a podcast. It won't be like banter or back and forth. It'll just be like them shit talking the players, shit talking the other team. And like when I saw that, and I saw it afterwards, right. I didn't see it during, I'm not watching a live stream during a fucking baseball game when my team is, you know, on the verge of potentially advancing to the ALCS. But I'm like, after uh, afterwards, I see it. I saw the highlights of when you know they won in extras, and all these Yankee fans are pissed and like I fucking hate this team and like who likes SpongeBob anyway? Like I'm like who watches this? Who right. sat through a three and a half hour base four well four and a half hour four and a half hour baseball game watching these guys just do nothing, just mope essentially because right. you know we're winning now so we're happy now we're losing so we're gonna mope. Yeah, it's like who watches this? Yeah, but that's the that's what I consider to be the barstool generation of like sports fans, where it's like we don't have a problem joining in on this weird sort of hot take thing. It is the hot take generation too, but this weird hot right. take thing where we kind of just talk shit, but we don't talk shit because it's all playful now. Because our our heroes like Stephen A. Smith do it. It's like no, you're right. talking shit. You're talking shit. You're talking <laughs> shit. That's what it is. <laughs> like that's what it is. Yeah. So like it's very bizarre to me. You said like Pat McAfee doesn't do that. I feel like he's very tactful, right? In doing and doing it. But again, I'm not a huge fan of that show, so I've never, I don't, I haven't watched all of it. I've only seen the highlights of you know just him kind of getting into it with a few people. I think it's playful, mm-hmm. and it'll be, believe me, I don't have a ground, I don't have a ground to stand on because I was never a professional athlete at all right. in any sport. He was so it's like does he get yeah but he doesn't do really it? consider himself one either he was like i just i was on the field for he says i was on the field for like an eighth of the time anyway you know mm. so but his highlight reel 
Yeah, he's got some, you know. <laughs> you know he watches that highlight reel on repeat. <laughs> yeah, get himself gassed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, sorry, I derailed that conversation. My apologies. Oh, it's all right. No, you're good. Um, I enjoy anything really that's unfiltered sports talk. You know what I mean? Any sort of behind the scenes view or hearing it actually from an athlete's mouth. You know, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about as 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 choreographed as it was the last dance. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was 100 percent. You know, Michael Jordan had everything to do with every bit of that. Absolutely. But I mean, I enjoyed it. It was good. I didn't really like the. Man, I just I don't like I don't enjoy so NBA. I'm oddly enough a Detroit Pistons fan, and like I don't really pay much attention anymore because they don't really give anything to to cheer for. But uh, back in the day, one of the I, I you know we grew up in St. Louis. You you don't have an NBA team, sure. So I just kind of latched on to whatever team some of my friends were latching on to, and a bunch of my friends were wearing bad boy stuff at school. And we're, you know, so then we were like, oh, bad boy Pistons. And then we just kind of all latched onto that. Right. So like, I, like, I just feel like they get painted, you know, granted. I mean, they were beating the shit out of other teams, but they weren't really doing anything any different than the Boston Celtics were doing anything different than if you ever watched any old Charles Barkley highlights, if he was just as sure. rough as anybody else, you know, Moses Malone, Moses Malone. I mean, Carl Malone put 40 stitches into Isaiah Thomas's eyebrow for elbowing him, you know, and he still got to play in the rest of the game. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. The different, how different everything is now. Like the, yeah, that know, NBA will never exist again. No, it won't. It would never. And, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Well, it shouldn't. Well, eh. Maybe they could loosen up a little bit. It was bit. fun. It was Maybe fun. They could loosen up a little bit, you know, eh. get that three second in the paint rule out of there. Let them play Just a little bit. Just get Let him one. hand check. Yeah. A little hand checking. See, the hand checking is what turned into, well, now I'm going to foul you hard on this rebound. Now all I'm right. going to foul you on the fast break. Like, let the hand checks go. That's where it yeah. all starts. That's where, <laughs> that's where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. Cole complains about LeBron all the time for flopping. I jokingly, like, just to play devil's advocate, I disagree. I'm like, oh, no, it's lebron But, yeah, it's... It's painful to watch sometimes. If you if you the, watch if you watch clips that have been edited together of him just doing it, like you're an adult in the NBA and <laughs> touching you, and you will, you just fell down and grabbed your eye. Like what is happening? Yeah, I don't. I, you know, it's a part of the game. Unfortunately, these days, like the flopping, uh, I think that he gets it. Uh, more just because of his status i think that oh, people sure. just kind of shine a light on it yeah but i don't really think that he does it any more or any less than any other star player you know in the league um but i definitely i mean the the he did that dude's under the microscope all the time uh i could not imagine my life being scrutinized <laughs> like every move that i make somebody just having something shitty to say about it you know what i mean whether sure. you know whether it's philanthropy or whatever but uh you know, I am, I, I hate comparisons. I, I hate the fact that it's just constantly a debate of who's better, Jordan, LeBron, or LeBron or Kobe. I just feel like that we could, I wish that we could just let them be the, the players that they were, you know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's completely, it's, it's, people say that Jordan couldn't take the next step without Pippen and that he wasn't anything before Pippen, but then, you know, he by himself laid 49 one night on the arguably the greatest Boston Celtics team ever. The 86 Celtics, five hall of famers on one team starting, I'm pretty sure. And one coming yep. off the bench or at least four starting and one coming off the bench and Bill Walton, you know? So he hung 49 one night on them and then 63 the next night without anyone name another player on that team, on that Bulls right. team. Nobody can. Right. Uh, Craig just, Hodges. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> I can name a couple, but yeah. yeah. Have you have you seen these? Uh, Maybe Bill Cartwright. They're shining a big light so, yeah. on Scotty Pippen right now, all over social media. Have you been seeing? Because he's talking so much shit. He doesn't What's stop wrong running his fucking mouth. It's, it's, like, just it's, out just... Of, it's, it's out of nowhere too. Like, what's the reasoning? Is it because he's so mad about the Last Dance and like that? he was shining a bad light in the last dance. I think that there was also a lot of like 
shit going around about other people banging his ex-wife while they were married. Scotty. And so I, yeah, uh, I think yeah. that like Boy. I like it was either like a rapper or like somebody that had like hooked up with her before, prior or like maybe like while they were together before they divorced oh, something. So I kind of think that maybe he could be after maybe thinking that he got a negative light painted on him in the last dance, which I don't know how he could have. I thought that that I mean, other than like the migraine game, which, dude, I mean, you that you you left a game because you had a, a migraine like nobody's going to fault you for that. If you've had a migraine before, people are going to well, talk Jordan shit about will. it. Yeah, well, Jordan people are going to talk shit about it if they've never had, yeah. you know, if they've Paul never Pierce had a migraine. left because he was going to shit his pants. Hey. He was taken out on a, in a wheelchair. Yeah, Mark Schler, he also got Mark stabbed used nine to piss times himself on the sideline. Yeah, but Paul Pierce got stabbed nine times and played like three days later. <laughs> oh, that's true. Paul yeah, Pierce is a G, dude. Dude, for real. Colt, don't you for dare real. talk the shit truth. about Paul Pierce. Yeah. You don't talk shit about the truth. No. I wasn't talking shit about nobody. I was just <laughs> point. <laughs> did he really shit his pants? I don't remember that. No, he almost did. They oh. took him out in a wheelchair. Oh. Have you not I remember that before? game? That I remember I didn't watch the game, more. but I definitely remember the highlights. Because they blamed it on like a knee injury or something like that, didn't they? I don't remember. And then he came and then he came back and it was, you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. Have that. That's funny. <laughs> hey man, you play game games night in and night out. Stuff's gonna happen. Yeah, it's very true. It's very true. Did you I mean go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's the same, it's you know, it's the just going back to the comparisons, like I just you know, a lot of people will say that, you know, yeah, LeBron's the greatest ever because he has all of these stat lines and everything. And I'm like, but it's, at the same time, he play, he's played for a very long time. I'm not trying to downgrade the earning of those statistics in any way. And I'm not trying to say that another player is better than another, but I mean, like when you play for a long enough period of time at the caliber that he's played, I mean, yeah, you're going to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in scoring. Yeah. You're going to pass or at least be on par with Michael Jordan's scoring our, our average points in you know the playoffs and stuff like that. I mean, it's just bound to happen. Yeah, like one, once once one has surpassed the other in like how many years they've been doing it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count anymore. I don't think. Right. Well, I think it all counts. It has to count. Well, I mean, if yeah, he's, it, if it he's all, still it playing, all counts. You know? I mean, I, I guess you, I'm saying like as far as comparing one player to another because one has now done it for longer, so oh, they have more of saying. an opportunity to. Yeah you know, surpass yeah. the others. So that's what I'm saying. It counts for sure. Yeah, it it definitely counts. And I'm I, like, to be honest, like we've talked about this several times on the show before, because we've both, I think we've both come to the agreement that the argument is kind of stupid because really what we're comparing our eras of NBA basketball, which are completely just vastly different. Right. Jordan's era versus LeBron's era, just insanely different. Um, so that's really what you're comparing as far as the player and who's better skill wise? Like we don't know, right? We don't know. Like because right. they've it, never played one on one. But even if they did, or at we least still they wouldn't know. Yeah. If we're exactly. looking at accomplishments, and I'm not even talking about titles, just like the ability to lead a team to winning. And I'm not talking about winning championships, just winning, just being able to be like, I'm one of the right. best guys on this court every night, and the guys around me are really good too. Both of them have incredible stats. You know right. the so when we're talking about eras, like I brought this up on a previous show, like Jordan never played under the scrutiny, like you said, that LeBron has had to do basically since he's been 14. You know, right. could you imagine Jordan playing with social media, oh. like during social media? Because that guy was fueled by bitterness, yeah, avenging losses, revenge, you know, uh, you know, Getting revenge on players, getting revenge on coaches, you know. Yeah. Michael jo Michael Jordan would be Donald Trumping it on Twitter for sure. His, totally. His totally. dad is quote. I remember a quote from his dad where he said that if you want Michael to do something, tell him that he can't do it. Yeah. Exactly right. I mean, he, he talked about it in the last dance, and like, even if that was scripted for him to like sort of look as like this mythical creature. People talked about this before that documentary came out. People talked about how the fact that he was bitter. That Charles oh, yeah. Barkley won the MVP and he didn't. He's like, well, that's cool. I'm going to fuck him up in the finals. That's yeah. fine. You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, people like when they play the Blazers in the finals, he was upset 
that people were talking about the idea that like Clyde Drexler is your, he's right Could there. Be with as good you. as him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's right there with you. Right. He's Which like, scoring wise right. back then he was, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Scoring wise. He was, was yeah. not, he was never the defensive player that Michael Jordan was, but he definitely on par for scoring. He didn't Clyde Drexler never really. And I named my kid Clyde. So uh, but he kind of had an easy West. Allow me to not be then. disrespectful here, but Clyde Drexler never made anyone else better. No, he played on a really good team with right. five really good players. Um, but that's, but that's fine. That happens. You know, the West was kind of weak back then. Yeah. Shit. Cause that was like, Fizzling, right. that was the, that was when, I mean, the jazz would have been up and coming. Cause Stockton and Malone were together, but the Lakers were fizzling out. Oh, when Clyde's, sure. you know, yeah. You had, you had the Sonics, was, the Blazers and the jazz. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Pretty much. Um, and Jordan beat all three of them. Right. Yeah. But, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. So he was, he was just fueled by this idea of like, Oh, you said I can't, well, let me show you, you know, Oh, you gave him that. And I should have had that. I remembered that. Like he took receipts on everything. Oh yeah. You know? And he kept them. And he, so like, imagine him being that guy with 3 million of us talking shit about him every second of every day on every platform on every network, like imagine Stephen A. Smith daring to talk about Michael Jordan's game while Mike right. was playing. Oh, right. <laughs> dude, he's going to light you up, Steve. Sorry. Like, so I, I, I say that as a difference because LeBron has had to do that. And it's, it's caused him to do, do and say incredible things in front of the media, mm -hmm. but it didn't affect his play. His play speaks for itself. Right. You know? Right. Like that to me is like the biggest difference between the two. And then now we're just talking about compare. Like people talk about Jordan because he never played against the zone. Right. He didn't. Have, well, he wouldn't have been able to play against the zone. I'll be. I'll get a. Sh he would have been fine against yeah. the zone. Are you shitting <laughs> he me? Would, he would have been just fine. <laughs> yeah. Players like Michael he Jordan played against would find in a college. Way. Yeah. Like, so like, what do you mean? He 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 had a game winning shot to win the national title against the zone defense. Like yeah. he would have been fine. So like people find all these silly arguments to like make comparisons. It's just like, can we just stop? Right. But did you watch air? I just watched it last night. No, but I, I was telling uh, Colt in a, a couple uh, in a text message that I'm, I'm very familiar with the backstory of, of how all that went down. I'm dying to watch it. I really want to watch it. It's pretty but, good. It's pretty good. Yeah. For some reason, I, mean, I hated I mean, it on we, it in the beginning. I'll I don't we know can, why, we can but talk about it. I don't think we're going to be giving any spoilers out. I think everybody knows wow. what happened. Yeah, I know how you, it ends. Hey, hey, everyone. <laughs> the Air Jordan is named after Michael Jordan. Spoiler. <laughs> there, there, uh, it's 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 pretty good. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh um, now let, let me ask you this though. Did you am I wrong in the last they talked about it in the last dance, right? Yes, they did. And, and but didn't they say that they went to Adidas first and Adidas said they, they couldn't come up with the shoe, like they couldn't make the shoe? I that's see, why that's, they end up going with Nike. That's what I had thought was that he went to Adidas and Adidas, uh, or at least wanted Adidas, yeah. and Adidas didn't wasn't able to basically meet their the stand like wasn't able to 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 I guess make a shoe that would function the way that they wanted it to. Right, see, this could be a spoiler. But, 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 I don't think I should say anything. This all could be I was going to say. Is they <laughs> All I was going to say is I don't think they portray it that way in air. No, they yeah. do. That same way? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to say too much. I don't want to spoil it. Okay, Are you guys going to watch it? Gonna, yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen uh, it. I've seen oh, it you way saw before it? you. Yeah, like weeks ago. Oh, yeah, they talked about that in air. Okay. Not the performance yeah. of the shoe, just not being able to do the deal. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe okay. that was it. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is um, I thought in the last dance they were saying they couldn't do the performance of the shoe. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe see, I don't I, remember that from that the documentary. Okay. I'll have to go back and watch it for like the yeah, sixth yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that. The movie's good, though. Uh, I knew a little bit about the backstory. Um, I don't know why. In the, like I said in the beginning, I kind of hate it. I didn't hate on it, but I was just like, I don't care. I don't mm -hmm. know if I want to watch this. I don't Whatever. It maybe maybe it was Ben Affleck's face. I can't stand his <laughs> face and movies he's in. 
Like I still want to like I'm eventually gonna watch what was the the movie called where he plays the drunken high school basketball coach? Oh, uh, that just came out like a couple years ago, didn't it? I've had several people tell me it's really good and that I would like it. I'm like, it's it's just him. Like I every time I see him in a trailer, I'm like, I don't fucking care. I don't yeah. care. Huh. It, and that's the way I was with air. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm you know, I'm being a hater there, obviously, but like so uh, I, get it. I get it, dude. But he's he's the worst person in the movie. Hands I'm down. totally guilty of face hating people sometimes. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, can't, I know I can't help several it. hate mine, so it's fine. I can't help Believe it. Me. I'm sure that there's a plethora of people that hate to see my face, and it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't care because uh, I feel the same way about some other people, and I might even feel the same way about them. Yeah. I mean, I like you. <laughs> Maybe. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, it's a good movie. I think Chris Tucker steals the movie. I think he's fantastic, and I'm almost yeah. like when I was watching, I was like. Oh, Chris Tucker. He's the Nike like, exec, right? Yeah. He's yeah. like the okay. VP of whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. oh, dude, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker can act. Like, this is good. Like, this is not like. It, it's hard to explain. Um, not like cheesy or comedic Chris Tucker. Yeah. Well, I'll he's definitely comedic. he's definitely comedic, but it's not like. A, you can definitely tell he's playing a guy. Okay. You know what I mean? Like a real guy as opposed to a made up, you know, he's not Smokey. Right. Right. <laughs> it, it, right. And I'm forever going to think of Smokey when I see him in anything. It's just like, oh, that's fucking. I know, Smokey. man. Um, but it's good. It's good. You should see it. It's, it's good. I think I think Jason Bateman did a good job in the movie. He was good. Jason Bateman's always good. We, we've we talked about this. Who is he? Playing? Uh, he plays another Nike What's guy. Oh, OK, he, he, he ended up being the guy who was in charge of basically taken like Nike marketing off the charts. Like hmm. after they got Jordan, he just took Nike to the next level with, you know, just do it and just do it. And, okay. Yeah. All this shit. So, um, God, what, what, a, <laughs> I mean, what a great slogan to just make the rest of you. I mean, just do it. You know, yeah. just do it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Everybody's in the yeah. board. Everybody in the boardrooms like do what bill? No, dude. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just do it, man. Doesn't matter what it is. Just do it. What do you want to do? Yeah. Do it. It. Yeah. Just or do all it. of it. All of it. You want to be all like Mike? Just do it. Oh wait, there's another one. There's. there's yeah. another <laughs> we got it. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking unbelievable. Yeah, I was watching it with my wife, and she didn't. Um. She didn't know that Michael Jordan's dad was murdered. I was like, how mm. did you? She's younger than me, so like, she, she would have been real young. When that happened, I just recently watched a documentary on that too. It's pretty interesting. There's a documentary about that. I think it was like on uh, True TV, or I ended up finding it on. It was either True TV or I ended up watching it on Prime. But yeah, Does it, take it was the conspiracy angle. It was kind of it was just yeah a little bit, but yeah. it was mostly about the uh, how one of the guys got wrapped up into. I guess there was three of them, three people who got convicted. Yeah. It was either three or two. And one of them was like, totally just like, not that kind of a person. And he just got ended up rapid, like wrong place, wrong time, basically. And was an accomplice to it. Hmm. And it kind of more focused it on him. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to watch that. But yeah. That yeah, was I a thought... bizarre time, man. And like I'm the last to... dance and like this era of documenting sports really shed light on like what really happened. At mm -hmm. the time, we're just thinking, like, this is tragic. This is terrible. Yeah. And then, you know, and of did, course, Mike... Did you watch the Laker one on Hulu? Uh, there's, a Lake, there's a Lakers one that's awfully takes this pretty much the exact same model as The Last what, Dance. Unfiltered, really? they cuss in it and stuff. And it's about pretty much from the moment that Jerry Buss bought the team in 79. Yes, yes, And then yes, it goes yes. until present day. I'm saying, yes, I know what you're talking about, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, it's definitely to. worth the watch. It's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I definitely need to catch that. Yeah. It goes into the uh, whole family dynamic of how, like, Genie Bus kind of, I guess for lack of a better term, kind of alienated her brothers in a way, or just really didn't really alienate, didn't mean to, just was, like, super fanatical about being a part of the team, whether, however it could be, you know. And she just ended up working her way to the point to where she is now. To where she's like the majority shareholder or majority she has like something the the 
yeah anyways but it was really interesting who is hmm. jay moore w- married to or with is it one of the buses is it genie maybe how old's genie she i know she was married to phil the... jackson for a long time i know that i know he's into the right. younger ladies or her and Phil Jackson were together for a long time. I know that. Now I have to know. Jay, Jeannie Buss and Jay Moore confirmed they're engaged to be married. Oh, there you go. Good for Jay. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> he's, an, he's an heir. Yeah. Yeah. Good he for Jay. He has like four lines. Right? Yeah, he's okay. marrying into royalty. Pretty much. Jesus. Pretty much. <laughs> So he went from, what was the his uh, Nikki Cox? Was that his ex wife? She was in that show, that uh, WB show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was married to her for a long time, and didn't Bobcat take her from him? Bobcat <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, or am I just saying? No, I things? I know names that you're speaking, but I don't know. A- I didn't know the Bobcat story, but if any, I mean. I, I think she's be, married to Bobcat now. I would be so upset. Oh <laughs> I mean, in general, I would be so upset. But like, if that was, oh my God, Bobcat Goldthwait? I think so. This is her though. Hold on. This broad. Okay. She yeah. does. Look what funny. show was she on back in the day? Yeah, I don't remember what that show is called. Um, but it was it was basically like a Married with Children ripoff, but it had a yeah, puppet it in it. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. yeah. And Bobcat played the voice of the puppet, I want to say. Man, that's how you do it. That's totally how you do it. You just got to voice a puppet, guys. Phew, man. So, do you have that Burke Kreischer video? We never <laughs> no. talked about that. I, well, hang on. Maybe, maybe I do. So, Mario, you're a fan of Burt, yes or no? I'm a fan of Burt things. Sometimes I'm also I was just telling uh, Colt also that I am almost to the point to where I'm sick of him. Like just as a just as a overall, like just oversaturation. But yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I do enjoy him on podcasts. I think he's I think he's funny when he's being genuine. I don't exactly enjoy his stand up that much. See, I'm opposite of you. I can't stand him on podcasts. His stand up is tolerable. But here's why I say that. So, like, he's gotten to a point, well, like like you said, it's like I'm to the point I'm not, like, can't stand on, but he's gotten to the point where it's like, I made jokes about this way, like, three years ago. I'd be like, Colt, all he does is talk about himself. Like, who listens to this podcast? Don't they know his story by now? Like, who who doesn't know about the Van Wilder thing? And who doesn't know about the machine? And who doesn't know about Will Smith? I fought a bear once. That, yeah, all that shit, right? And then... (laughs) Now it's gotten to the point where he's become like successful. It's like, well, now I'm like a narcissist where I just need to get this validation from people to make sure that they know about all these things. And that's just, it's so off-putting to me. Like, yeah. at the beginning of the show, we talked about band stuff and I mentioned stuff I've done and I'm cringing at the idea that I talked about it. Like, I hate talking about myself so like when i hear someone else do it i'm like oh, yeah but i know man what do we do here I'm like what do we I know how do we get out of this like <laughs> so yeah. like yeah that is so off-putting to me but he he was on so I, it might have been two bears which again when that started i it was okay like i it was i thought right. it was like, funny yeah yeah i like tom segura though as a comedian but even mm-hmm. him now as like a dude on podcast i'm like all right dude I'm like, almost to the same you got, point. You with got him Rolexes and you you got cool cars, like whatever. Like, I also think they told all the stories. Like there, there's nothing. Like, like I don't care if they talk about that anymore, shit, you know? but it's just not for me. So I'm gonna tune out. I'm not yeah. gonna complain about it. It's just like not for me. Uh, Nowadays, I just but, like the I like to hear the dude in the background laughing because I think that dude has like the <laughs> has the best <laughs> laugh ever. Yeah, he's, and that's pretty much it. He's entertained. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, but it might have been on one of these podcasts where like Bert was talking about the movie and he was like, this is going to change how comedians get into movies and how like movies get comedians into them. And it's like going to change everything. I'm like, why? Like, I remember <sighs> and when, when he said that, I was like, that's gross. Like, how why is it going to how is it going to change anything? It's not going to change anything. Like, yeah. you're not the first stand up to be the star of a movie, no. you know, 
So this video that I sent to Colt, obviously this guy, but this guy, I'm not subscri subscribed to him, but his videos come on my feed. He often talks about comedians, especially LA comedians. And I think it's kind of clear in this video that he's a fan of Bert, but he takes the kind of like same approach. Like movies will never be the same for standups after this. If like, if this movie fails, it could ruin it for standups. Or if this movie's <laughs> successful, play the video, you'll see. But I, I remember seeing this going, has this dude not ever heard of Rodney Dangerfield or Richard Pryor? Richard Pryor. Or Martin Lawrence, or Kevin Hart, or Martin Short. Any, should we, Martin. Shall we keep going? Like, yeah, any of these guys. <laughs> like, what's going on? Why is Bert the saving grace for any of this? Right. But I feel like he thinks this because of the projection of like mm. this movie was mm -hmm. made because of me type deal. I don't know. I can Go see ahead. that. Can you see this? Yep. Yeah. Maybe a lot more significant than anyone quite understands leading up to the premiere, including Burt. Stand-up comedian starring in box office movies is obviously not new. From Jim Carrey's insane stretch of classics in the early 90s, Kevin Hart's recent run of huge comedy films, or even Andrew Schultz's appearance in the remake of White Men Can't Jump. Pause this, please. Comedians have been hired to act on the big So, we're going to bring up Andrew Schultz being in... I haven't seen it yet, and I never will. The worst remake of all time. That's going to be his example. Yeah, that was a that was a very terrible choice of comedian. Yeah, but you yeah. can tell he's a fan. Like otherwise, why bring that up? Yeah, he's definitely a little bit butthurt about the Andrew Andrew Schultz thing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have thrown it in there. Is this Joey Diaz? Yeah, that's him. yes, he's, that's from the longest yard. One hundred percent. Yeah. All right, here we go screen but never before has a studio taken quite as large of a chance on a comic like sony is right now on burt kreischer and his new movie the machine the story that was made famous 12 years ago as the closing joke in burt's act and has been performed in front of audiences all around the world is now just two days away from being released in movie form the upcoming butterfly effect at burt that's pretty much all that video hmm. so like how have they never taken a chance like that before I'm I'm confused know, by that statement. Unless, like, unless unless they're saying the amount that it costs to make it is higher than what did it cost to make it? Thirty five mil. Kevin Hart's hmm. in movies with The Rock. Those movies have to cost hundreds. Yeah, Jumanji of Jumanji had to be more expensive yeah. than yeah, yeah. But or what was the one not where the uh, lead, but they're not the lead character trying to carry the film. What was the one where The Rock was the CIA agent and Kevin Hart was like just a guy? Uh, Central Intelligence. Central yeah. Intelligence. Thank you. I'm yeah, yeah, so yeah. ashamed. I haven't that seen had, it. That, I know what that, that had to. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It was a good movie. <laughs> yeah. I watched it. I knew you saw it. I knew it. I shouldn't oh, have I've said anything. It. I knew you would have known. Oh, you saw it? Oh, okay. yeah, I've seen it. I've, I've seen, seen it. it. <laughs> um, Honestly, most anything that The Rock's in, I've probably seen. Oh. I wouldn't go that far for me, but uh, I would say that I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'm dabbling in the rocks movies. I dabble in any kind of movie, you know? Sure. What did the machine cost? Uh, it's showing 35 million. I think okay. what did, what did it make? And, did it, uh, Cause it's been it, out I, what, two I'm, weeks I'm now. Pretty, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it made 9 million in the first week. That's not bad. Hmm. In 2023. That's not bad. I well, mean, if it was okay. if it was 1994, that would be awful. That would be like, yeah, like if Twister only made nine million in its opening week, they'd be like, <laughs> "Bill, you gotta go. You gotta I'm gonna go. lose dude. my fucking house." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Box up. I feel like I don't. I mean, nine million dollar, nine million. Yeah. So domestic, nine point three million. Eh. Hmm. And it got released on May 26th. I don't know. But I but I also think and I might be wrong, but I think that anybody who's gonna watch this movie would have went and watched it like the first week. If they I were agree. gonna watch it in theaters. Yeah, I agree with that. Because that's like true Burt Kreischer fans, probably. So I I mean, of course it's probably gonna go down regardless, but I don't know. That's all still a long way away from 35 just to break even. Has it been promoted on like other than on the internet? Has it been promoted like on network television? I don't have know. to imagine mm. it hasn't been. 
Not that that matters, but right. I'm curious to know that because you get a different demo if you promote it there. You know what I mean? So I'm curious for about sure. That. And I don't watch TV all that much, so I wouldn't know. I would. I haven't seen it, obviously, but um, I don't know. I feel like nine million is not too shabby. Am I wrong here? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I I didn't think that it was great. Uh, but whenever just, you put it in perspective, it, like, at, you know, this day and age, like, I guess I would say like, yeah, I guess that's really not that bad. But also if, yeah. you're, if you're trying to break even at 35 and your first week only makes nine, like you got a little bit to go. Always yeah. To go. So it looks like as of the sixth, it's only made a little over 12. So mm. obviously it's fizzled a little bit. We're climbing though. We're yeah. climbing. You know, so. I mean, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> but to the idea that like, He's got like Hollywood on his back for stand-up comedians. I'm like, where? Where does that even? Yeah, work? that's a that's a that's a strong statement. Well, that guy used Jim Carrey as an example as well, and it's like, how how much? Like, how expensive was it to make? Uh, not the mask. What was the big one? After the mask? Yeah, or any of those? Like, <laughs> how much did those cost? They had to have cost. Maybe not. I mean, I don't. Maybe Dude, I, I just watched shit about Cable movies. Guy the other day. Love it. I it's one it. of the Weird most underrated movie though. Love it. I love it so much. I like it more than Ace Ventura. And people <laughs> think I'm crazy for that, but I would much rather watch that movie. Yeah. Um, I think Dumb and Dumber takes it for me over Cable Guy, but Cable Guy is really, agree. Agree. It's, Dumb really and Dumber is yeah. it's really good. Dumb and Dumber is just, yeah. I, the more I quote it still, I'm 41. <laughs> and like the more I quote it, I still laugh at the dumbest shit. Like, you know, yeah. Tic Tac, sir. Yeah, I say I say yeah. something from that movie, like at least once a day. Dude. That and the Big Lebowski. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, Ace Ventura cost twelve million to make. Production <laughs> budget twelve million. Uh, it made one hundred and seven million worldwide. Oh. Seventy-two million domestically. <laughs> Talk about nice. a win. Good for you. But again, what you, year Jim. did I say before? Did I say 94? That came out in 94. Yeah. So yeah. 35 million or 9 million in 94 sucks. Yeah. And all, but sure. also like if they were making Ace Ventura today, what would the, what would it cost to make it versus what it cost back then? Well, it would have to be woke first off. Oh so yeah. No you more making make fun it. of trans. Couldn't do that. Good point. Good point. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we <laughs> could remake me, myself and Irene these days. But that was a tough one too. I've never seen that movie. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so Colt, you know, and this isn't a spoiler at all. So, but there's a scene where he, uh, one of the kids is having trouble with his homework, and then the other two gather around and they're like, you know, it's like some sort of like, he's got the, these three kids and they're all like just geniuses, and so he's just like this guy that's like just a dumb dude that's just. A, a police officer or you know rhode island state cop who's like raising these like three kids who are pretty much raising themselves <laughs> like anyways so that one kid's got like a, like a question about like trigonometry or whatever and and then jim carrey comes in and he's like how's everybody's day and then he makes them all like kiss him before he leaves you remember that that scene colt uh, yeah kind of yeah, they all ki- give him a kiss on the cheek uh-huh. like yeah they didn't know that he was gonna do that he made that he like just did that on the spot oh really and, they, and, they, and made him made them all give him a little kiss on the cheek the one guy's like, "Wow, daddy!" That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so funny. Sorry, you're good. I'm trying to look up. So, man, that actually reminds me too. Like, uh, the I heard an interview with uh, uh, what what's his name? In Dumb and Dumber, he was the cop that pulls him over and ends up drinking Arthur the Williams. Yeah, oh, Arthur, yeah. I heard an interview with him, and he was talking about how like all everything that was said in that he he made up on his own oh, like they just awesome. told him to yeah that's do not your own surprising thing. at all yeah yeah you pumpkin pie haircutted freak <laughs> yeah see i could quote that movie all day uh so he went from the mask to dumb and dumber to batman forever to ace ventura to cable guy liar liar batman liar forever. liar is about Batman's where it character. ended for me with jim carrey i don't know yeah. that i've seen anything he's done after that uh mm. did you ever see the number 23 no Yes. That was actually a really good movie. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was a stretch at first for, for me to kind of take him seriously in that, but then yeah. It's a good it's a it's an interesting story. 
And uh, I thought he did it. I thought he did it really well. I think I might have seen uh, what's the penguin movie, Mister Popper's Penguins or something like oh, that. Yeah. Was a movie. <laughs> I think I might have seen that too. That was pretty good. I lied. I've seen The Grinch, and it was. Oh yeah, so I've annoying. seen Eternal really Sunset of the Spot, or is it Eternal Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless The Spotless Mind? Mind. I saw that one. That was I think really I've seen weird. Bits and pieces, and I lied again. I've seen Bruce Almighty. Other than that. Oh yeah. Did he do the Truman Show after that too? So Truman Show was 1998. So that would have been okay. right after Liar Liar. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That was a good one. Liar Liar was yeah, a good I haven't one. seen it. Liar Liar is good. Yeah. I yeah. like it. It's fun. I love I love the scene when he's in the bathroom and he's beating the crap out of himself. Like I walks, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm kicking my own ass. Do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Jose Canseco. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, the to the guy who made that video, and again, I Joke World is the name of that channel, and he's got a ton, a ton of subscribers. So I probably shouldn't be saying anything because what the fuck do I know? But it's like, yeah, hey man, go watch Back to School. Go watch, you know, anything, <laughs> anything with Richard Richard Pryor. Go watch like any of these movies. Like you'll see that. Oh wait, stand up comedians carry movies. Right. Go watch The Jerk. For oh sake. my gosh you know like he's so good um i just find it bizarre that he said that and it, it, like you can even go so much more recent than any of the ones i just said like anything Mart martin lawrence was in mm -hmm. what was the budget on big mama's house see now it's got oh, me like, dude <laughs> <laughs> like now it's just got me thinking about all this like uh big mama's house like eddie murphy like oh my gosh the nutty professor movies Coming to America. Like on, yep. yeah. That was yeah. Big Big Mama's house cost thirty million dollars to make. It made a hundred and forty one million at the box office. All right. <laughs> Good for you. What was the other one? So he had Big Mama's house and he he did something else too. Uh, I mean he Martin did movies Lawrence. before that, like Blue Streak and uh right, Blue Streak. Was, was Blue Streak the one with Tim Robbins? I think Blue Streak. Because speaking of faces that I hate, Tim I think Robbins. Blue is one of Streak might have been the one with uh, Steve Luke Zahn. Wilson. Oh, Luke yeah. Luke Maybe Wilson's it Luke in Wilson? it. But yeah, Steve Zahn's in it too. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Steve Zahn. That dude's so funny. Sorry. I just takes me back to like like Strange Wilderness and like. His character, <laughs> his character yeah. in uh, in uh, how was that Tom Hanks movie about the one hit wonders? That thing oh, you do. That thing you do. That yeah. Thing, yep. 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 Love that thing you do. Oh yeah, Steve's yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that thing you do is great. It's one of the only Tom Hanks movies I like. The only yeah, one of the very on few. Tom Hanks hating road. Oh, do you? Are you not a Tom Hanks fan? Ah, uh, we just, just became kinda, best friends. I just kind of, I got, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I can't stand them. I can't, yeah. st I can't stand them. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hated them. And I, I didn't mind the green mile. And I think that was because the rest of the movie was okay. really good. Yeah. It's, it's the rest okay. of the movie was really good. Yeah. Uh, everybody in that movie was awesome. Minus. Well, but yeah. And then the, what's the one where he played a mobster too? Uh, something road, the road, to, the road to perdition. Road to perdition. Like, yeah, I oh, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the fuck so out of here, Tom Hanks. Trying to be a like, mobster, dude. Get the yeah, get so out of here. Like, it's so good. I'm like, no, it's not, dude. It's, it's a guy that looks all. like he's a professor trying yeah, to be yeah. a fucking mobster. Like, I, it's not believable at all. I don't know. It's just, a, it's it, for me. It's, it's, a, it's with him. It's like this, this stretch of like he has this stretch of movies, probably starting around that time up till now. Because he's brought out all of these movies now. Like, what was the one he did with Spielberg recently about the submarines? Oh, um, I don't, I don't know, but I, I remember seeing the, the the trailer being just going, "Who the fuck is going to watch that? <laughs> Who cares?" Like, it's it's Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks specific. How many World War II movies has Tom Hanks done? At least four. It feels like. Like, how many can you do, Tom Hanks? Like, you don't get to own World War. Yeah, yeah. You don't get to own World War II. Like, or who was it else. that he? 
who was it that he had a run with for like for the longest time in the 90s and early 2000s? It was, was it Zemeckis? Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, yeah. It was like every Robert Zemeckis film had had Tom Hanks in it. Yeah. And is it was it, just like, it, come did the he do F big? on. He probably. Probably. Big's a big's yeah. good. I, like I feel big. I do I I love big. I I like Tom Hanks and those early what's the stand-up movie that he did? It was great. My my dad and I used to watch it all the time. Oh uh, yeah. It was with uh, him and uh Shelley Long. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, oh no, it was him and Sally Field, not Shelly Long, Sally Field. Yeah, it was Shelly Long's Money Pit. Yeah, that was the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Money yeah. Pit. Yeah, Money Pit. Money Pit's okay. Bachelor Party is his best movie. Yeah, I love Bachelor, Bachelor Party. Yeah, and he wasn't even the best person in it. No, no, but it's good. He's good. He's funny. Yeah. Like, what happened to that Tom Hanks? How did we go from that, like, to, like you said, like Road to Perdition and. Like even people like that Captain Phillips movie, like it's so good, his performance yeah. is so great, and the movie's so important. I'm like, no, it's not. It's boring. It's terrible. Honestly, it's not... like I was kind of like his, the 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 his portrayal of sh being in shock in Captain Phillips, whenever that like everything mm -hmm. kind of ended. You know, I thought that that was like pretty interesting because I've been in moments where like you kind of almost freeze up, and then like afterwards sure. you almost have like an anxiety attack because all of the emotions come because the adrenaline wears off. You know. And I thought that was, I'll give, I'll throw him a bone. Like that was an interesting scene. Like I, I watched that movie and I was like, okay, dude, like you did pretty good. <laughs> Maybe and that's then it's like just right, yeah. it's just right back to same old. Feels like the next door neighbor trying to teach me something every time I see him. Yeah, and he's like the super woke guy now in these movies. Uh, you know, like the there, it's not the submarine one, but there was another one he made about like the Civil War. And he was yeah. like. Uh, he he found he like he found a girl or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't see the whole thing. I, I do remember the previews though. The only the only scene I saw it was on one of these whatever all the streaming services that we all pay for now. But it, it was, I remember it was um it was a scene like when you hover over it. It was the scene where he's like rallying the union guys, and like in the scene they kill this guy. And then I remember going, well, I don't want to watch that. But I remember hearing people talk about it later. The union, the, the dude that got killed did nothing other than ask Tom Hanks' character to just come speak about, like, promote what the guy was doing. And Tom Hanks' character just like, no, I'm going to call an audible right now. I'm going to rally all these troops to kill you. Like, it's just, like, super woke. Like, it's like, it, it, like, this guy's not a slave driver, Tom Hanks' character. I don't even know who what his name is in the movie, but it's, like, yeah. it's so bizarre. Right. Um, to go from like bachelor party to that, I get you, yeah. you advance in your career, but I'm going through his filmography, just like looking for like stuff. I like catch me if you can is good. I'm okay with him in that. That was the Di DiCaprio one. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, that movie. Good. That was good. That's, That's a true story, movie. isn't it? I believe so. Yeah. I think so. loosely yeah. based if you, if you will, but I think uh, the guy that ended thing up, you do uh, was good. I think the guy ended up like starting or like being some some like really important in the fraud department of the FBI. Yeah, that's how they ended the movie. They said that he started working for the FBI yeah. and helping them check, you know, catch people. But that's a good movie. Yeah. And you know what's one? I so I just was looking through and I totally forgot about it. So like Philadelphia, have you watched that lately? Oh, dude, that was a powerful movie. That was a good movie. I do I remember like watching it. that movie. I didn't like I it. I watched watching it that recently. When See, I haven't seen it recent. Maybe that's the maybe that's the thing is because I saw it whenever I was like ten or twelve, whenever it first came oh, out. Oh, dude, watch it now! As an adult. Like, Holy shit! Yeah, I don't think yeah. you feel that way now. You're like, okay. this is cheesy. What happened? Yeah. Why? <laughs> okay. How did they convince us this was powerful? Because it it's just so <laughs> it's so campy and cheesy. Uh, okay, so my favorite role of his is in a league of your own, a league of their own. Jimmy Dugan. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, dude, he's hilarious. The entire he's hilarious the entire movie. Yeah, he's absolutely That's hilarious when he yells at the little kid on the bus. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no crying in baseball. All of it. It's, That's his best role. Yeah. Now that I'm he, looking at it, when he in that movie, he has this thing where he yells a lot in that movie, and when he yells, his voice goes to like this higher register, and I don't understand why it's the most hilarious shit to me when to like listen to tom hanks like basically lose his shit on all these uh, uh and, you know in that movie on everybody playing baseball dude it's just it's so funny that's early tom mm -hmm. hanks when he was funny yeah. like a lot of those earlier movies like bachelor party and splash he was like the like money pit he was like the goofy the goofy guy 
big. Mm -hmm. And then Forrest Gump happened and the, the world changed forever. Yep. <laughs> I Cole, like how the Forrest beginning Gump of this fan. No, I I'm just thinking I like how the beginning of this was I hate Tom Hanks. I hate everything that he does. And then it's like now I'm saying all the things I love. Movies, yeah. Eight movies that you <laughs> <laughs> I think I said four. I said four though. <laughs> usually usually how it happens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't even know why we started talking about him. Oh, that thing you do. Yeah. Yeah. Steve's on. Yes. Yes. He's been in some good ones too. He's a good side guy in movies, like supporting role. Yeah. You ever seen Joyride? Yes. Yeah. Paul Walker. That's an mm -hmm. underrated movie. That's oh, an wait, under that the, the radar where, movie. Is that the one where he had that post through his leg? That's, That's it was the, is that not Joyride? They're like prank. They prank the. They're like prank calling the uh, the yeah, they, guy on the the trucker on the radio. The trucker, yeah. They use the yeah. CB to. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I thinking? And the trucker gets real mad. I gotta figure it's, out what movie I'm mad. thinking of. Post through the leg. Hang on. That might be. Mm, might be it. Something. Post through leg. Let's see if Google has any idea what I'm talking about. It Google always does. Joyrides uh, and uh, that's an uh, like under the radar, under the radar movie. I love it's that pretty movie. Good. Pretty yeah. good. And Paul Walker, he's in one of the other, one of my favorite movies that no one's ever seen and totally underrated and off the ra under the radar. But uh, have you ever seen Running Scared? Oh my God, I knew you were going to say it. I felt it fucking through the computer that you were going to say that, that movie. movie. I fucking <laughs> love movie's that movie. So dude. good, dude. Yeah, that movie's so, so good. good. Uh, Everybody in that the, movie's good. Everyone's good. Uh, what's the the lady's name? Uh, Vera she was in the Depart. Yes, dude. Her yeah. in that movie, that scene where she... Uh, Tries to get the kid back from the pedophiles. Oh my gosh, dude. And she dude. loses. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such and a good scene. That whole, like, I feel it right now. Like the uncomfortability of like so that room. Yeah, like, yeah. Where they where the kid. Oh my gosh. And the, the fucking cameras on the walls. Oh my God, dude. And it just she makes me. She rules that in that movie, man. She's yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. What, what is it again? I haven't seen it. What is Running it? scared. Running, Running scared. scared. Yeah. yeah. How old are we it's... talking? 2008? Mid 2000s, yeah. Okay. Late 2000s, yeah. like, yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe 2006, actually. Like a little bit. It might be that old. Yeah. I mean, look yeah. Because there's a running scared that came out before it, I believe, has Gene Wilder in it. Mm -hmm. 2006. 2006. Okay. Uh, running scared with, no, Gregory Hines. That's right. Uh, 1986. Okay. But no, it's the running scared from 2006. Cold. You should yeah. watch it. It's, really good and really no good. one knows no like no one knows about it like it's just like it's one of those movies like you you i remember what when i watched finally because i was you know i didn't see it at the theater i remember we rented it or that might have 2006 was blockbuster still around yeah probably maybe yeah i remember watching it going i remember the trailer for this movie why the fuck didn't i see it in theaters i'm an asshole that whole mm -hmm. thing yeah i that was uh Man, there was a lot. Of, there was a, that was a, yeah, that was a really, that I just remember that whole movie. You're almost like having an anxiety attack the mm -hmm. whole time. You're just, it's just one of those movies. Like it starts off like high anxiety, you know? Totally. The whole movie. It's good. It's so good. I like shit like that. See, like my me wife too. always gives me shit. She's like, you like the darkest, weirdest, most depressing shit. How do you <laughs> do this to yourself? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like to have fun. Apparently I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to party. Do you are you yeah. a serial killer documentary guy? Me? Either of you guys? Either one of you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I don't I don't know what else they can do to shock us anymore. Yeah. Because we've we've learned about all the the big ones at this point. Like if I see another Ted Bundy documentary, I'm gonna be like, guys, we get it. The fuck it's over. Here. Yeah. We know we it, get now. it. You know. And Zach Efron, that Zach Efron movie was pretty good. He, I was he actually did surprised. A really good job in that movie. Yeah. yeah. I actually uh, got like 15 minutes into it. And that's like the last, I just, I think something came up and I just stopped watching it and I haven't, I haven't finished it. It's pretty good. So there's that. It's not great, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I, did, did you, either of you guys watch Mindhunter on mm -hmm. Netflix? Mindhunters? Yeah. I didn't I finish love... it, but I started it. 
Yeah. I've heard good Love things about show. it. I haven't watched it though. Love that show. Yeah. Very interesting to think about, you know, you know, looking back like, oh yeah, by the way, they didn't have a way to track these guys. No. You know I mean? like, like they're legit just going off a of, I'm starting from scratch and then making uh, it's just assumptions, so crazy. just guessing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just happened. making these upset these assumptions about somebody. Yeah. What's for the, DNA? What's the, what's the most recent one that was out? Patrick, you watched it. My wife Dahmer? was watching. Yeah, Dahmer. That hated was good. It. I hate it. You didn't it. like it? No. You didn't like it? I what about it? Uh, what, what what about it did you not like? Uh well, I, I I'll tell I'll, I'll I'll say it like this. The Dahmer story doesn't interest me at all. Okay. Like what I knew of it, right? Okay. Okay. So I gave it a chance just because I was like, well, maybe they make it interesting and the acting yeah. will be good. And I finished the first episode. I was like, I know I looked at my wife, I was like, I don't know if I can. She's like, Yeah, I don't I don't care. I was like, Me either. All right, good. I will but, say I felt that way about the Elvis movie uh that was out. We already um, talked we talked about it. Yeah, like, I hate and, this. and I will of say, Tom Hanks. I'll say the reason why I compare it to that is because like in both the show Dahmer and Elvis, I really, really love the way that the main character played those roles. Like I really love the way that that Evan actor, I can't remember what his last name is, Evan something, but he played Dahmer. I think I was just, like, just absolutely brilliant performance and same with the dude that played Elvis. Absolutely brilliant performance. I just didn't really dig the way that the movie was put together too much. I yes, kind of cheesy. I kind of hyped it up in my own head too, because my dad is a huge Elvis fan and growing up, like, you know, having a musician father, like, you know, I just really, and you know, growing up as a musician, it's like, I always just idolized my dad. So like, I just kind of naturally became an Elvis fan because sure. of my dad, you know, and I really was interested and they just didn't like, I really wanted them to go into the Memphis mafia. They didn't do that. I really yeah, wanted dude. them to like, they're, they just, they just, there's nothing dark about it. It was all campy it and it's sort told of the like, same fucking yeah. story that every, that Elvis, we already know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I was kind of, the only thing that I didn't know was, uh, the, the BB King sneaking him in the back door of some of the club, some of the blues clubs. And they showed that for just a little bit. That was I cool. Think it, but why did they have to play? modern day grimy hip hop when he drove through the black neighborhoods of Memphis. right why did right? why did we why, why did we do <laughs> that, was, that was like yeah. patrick's biggest downfall oh, I, of it dude. pissed me off man there was a lot of know. yeah i don't know it should it, it feels insulting like why don't you i it's said absolutely this on a previous insulting. episode yeah i was like why don't you play when he's driving through dri driving down beale street to go sneak into these clubs why don't you play I don't know some of the artists he was going to see and play B. steal B. King from song. I'm using would it kill you to play a little there. Richard song? Yeah, yeah. I'm you just know what like, I mean? Yeah. Like, like little Richard's literally on fucking stage. You could have just transitioned. Just play it. You know the like, shot into him. And play it. Yeah, I'm riding your wave, dude. Yeah, it was weird. This that 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 turned me off, and then every Tom Hanks scene, I'm just like this fucking guy. Yeah, but yeah, make me hate him more because he ruined Elvis. Yeah, he's the Even guy. Tom Hanks had nothing to do with it, but like yeah, the visual yeah. no, representation he's, he's that I have now. Yeah, he's yeah. The, he's the visual. Yeah. <laughs> so I hate you more now, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Ruined Elvis. I like yeah. it. <laughs> what did you? Not only you did you not for? land on the moon, you couldn't even oh. make it to the moon, Tom Hanks. Yeah. But now you now you made me hate Elvis. Yeah. <sighs> and you didn't meet Kennedy, you fuck. God, you damn fucking it. liar. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> Cole, what were you looking up? I oh the Steve Zahn thing. I didn't find it. Oh, oh, the pole through the leg. Yeah, I really yeah, think it, that was in Joyride, but I might be wrong. It, it could have been. I but when you said that, it made me think of a different movie he was in, and I I lost it. Steve's on. Have you guys seen Strange Wilderness? Yes. Oh, um, dude, remind me what that is. So his dad owns like an or had a nature show, and it was like his dad was like really popular, like a really popular, you know. Uh, kind of like Steve Irwin this, type of is this guy. fictional. Yes. Okay. And okay. in the movie, his dad, I guess, passes away and then he gets the show and he's just running the show into the ground. And then they're about to sell the show or they're about to cancel the show or something. So he's kind of like the show is, or the movie is a last, their last ditch effort to save his dad's nature show. And they're just a bunch of fuck ups. 
Yeah. It's like him and Jonah Hill is one, is one of yeah, them. Patrick, you probably remember like the previews of it, I think had like Justin Long sitting at the table and he's got oh, eyes, yes, yes, all yes, drawn yes, on yes, his yes, eyelids. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the shark the shark coming around and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen that, but I remember that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to rewatch that. It's been a long time since I watched it. Just a typical stoner comedy. Yeah, pretty much. Those are okay. Yep. Joyride. You might be right, dude. It might be in Joyride, man. He's been in some shit. Was he in, was he in Jeepers Creepers? Steve Zahn? Yeah. Justin Long was. Steve Zahn I don't remember. Not. Okay, so Justin Long, so I'm thinking of yeah. I think okay. the main name in the first one was that Eliza Dushku. Actress? She Jeepers Creepers? Oh, yeah. What happened to I her? She was in the first no, one. she wasn't in that. That was a different girl. Which one was she? Oh, wrong turn. She, she was, was in wrong, wrong the turn. First. Yeah, wrong that, turn. That wrong turn's awesome. Wrong turn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still, still, what happened to her? I haven't heard that name in a long time. She yeah, probably she quit know. acting. I wouldn't blame her if she did. But I don't know. Liza Dushku. Terrible name, but it really it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't flow like... off the of... <laughs> How about you just not let your brain go there, Colt? Hmm. Even though the name Eliza isn't great. Man, who's the hater on this episode? It's me. I'll take I'll take the throne on this one. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so apparently Steve Zahn's still still in the game. He's got two movies coming out this year. Good for him. Yeah. All right. I was looking for other movies that he might have had a pole go through his leg. I think it is Joyride. Yeah. I was like, yeah. National Security. <laughs> like, I'm looking at all these movies from back in the day. Like, oh, speaking uh, of Martin Lawrence, that's what yeah. it was. It wasn't Blue Streak, it was National Security. Okay. That's what it was. He then was an employee of the then? month. Was he? Oh, this He's is a different one? employee of the month. Oh, okay. Oh. So that's Matt the- Dillon. Oh, I remember this movie. It has Matt Dillon and uh, Christina Applegate. It was like a dark, yeah, dark B film. I don't think it was like Christina major. Applegate. She's got, she's got like something. There's like something like wrong with her right now, isn't there? Like she is like uh, like MS, isn't it? Oh really? MS? Yeah, yeah like she's like in now. like like barely walking at this point. Like she's in a wheelchair and stuff. No shit. Speaking really? of that, yeah. I started the Michael J. Fox documentary. Can't, can't oh do my it. god, oh. dude! I don't know if my, I will my wife take trying- that at the moment. My that wife's trying to get me bummer. to watch it. My wife's trying to get me to watch it. And I couldn't do it. Dude, yeah. Dude, it, he, okay. It's so very he, well done. But what was the what was the quote that he had in a recent interview that just floored me? It was like, with gratitude, we find purpose, or something like that. That like if sense. we exp- something like that, if we express like if we oh something like that. But dude, oh, it was just, you know. Yeah, I've been, you know, gratitude I'm, makes optimism sustainable. Thank you very much. That is exactly it. <laughs> there it yep. is. God with, love grat- with gratitude, optimism is sustainable. That's exactly yep. it. Yep. Yeah. What a great quote. What a great quote. That is. That is. I, uh, you know, I'm not short of battling inner demons myself and, and, you know, just like, I've really been trying to like practice a lot of that being more mindful of my emotions, being more present in the moment also, and also really trying to find something every day that I'm grateful for. You know what I mean? Because otherwise dude, like you feed into that negativity and you guys know, like as fathers, especially you're overcritical on your, I mean, every aspect of my life, I'm overcritical of myself, you know, and to be able to just take a step back and like, realize like, okay, like things really aren't, that fucking bad mario like it's a beautiful morning you have a car to drive you have a roof over your head things are awesome you know what i mean sure. sometimes yeah. you just gotta take a step actually, back and find actually, the beauty and shit jacoby shaddix i don't know if you guys follow him on social media at all but at pretty much every day or once a week or something like that he posts what he puts in his notes on his phone and it's all about like what he's grateful for and stuff like that and it's always about like his wife and his you know, music career and kids and all this other stuff. But I mean, it's lists long. I just think it's pretty cool that he like shares that kind of thing with everybody because a lot of people are, you know, more personal about that kind of stuff. It's just like, for sure. 
you know, sure. is he still he, sober? I don't, I don't know. I, I haven't seen him do any like drink on stage or anything like that, but I, I, I know that I was know. a big part of his motivation a couple of years back. I remember seeing a video of him celebrating, I don't know, however many years of sobriety it was, which with, you know, with a guy like that, that's huge, huge. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine, uh, going on the road and being sober that's good dude yeah <laughs> yeah with like, with the demons that i was fighting back then and those bands dude like i would have been like the most self-destructive person to be around mm -hmm. seriously but especially it just been especially touring around with other, especially touring around with other bands who are doing the same thing you know it's oh, like dude. you don't have a choice really in the matter you have to or you're gonna be you know you're not in the club you're you know in i don't know if any bands have ever like missed out on opportunities because they you know were taking the sober route when they were on tour with bands who weren't or something like that i don't know if that's a thing or not but i could see i could see it like you not fitting in very well because of being a sober band you know what i'm saying absolutely i can see it well i mean maybe not so now but i think uh there were times where i could definitely see that being a, a major struggle for sure yeah for sure yeah, I went a long time playing shows without ever drinking before. Um, and eventually, and I, I, to be honest with you, it was just sort of like, it seemed like, well, logically, I don't want to be shit-faced. Right. On, you know, and then it became, play with a few bands who do that. And I'm like, well, that, let me just have, just have a beer. That, that turns two. And yeah, yeah. So eventually I became a guy who's like, well, let me just go on stage a little bit buzzed. Let me catch a buzz before I go on stage. Yeah. And I kind of feel like two different people were on stage for those moments. 100%. The guy, the guy who was not buzzed was much more anxious about everything else. And so, <laughs> yeah. When they say alcohol lowers your inhibitions, it's true. It <laughs> Especially when you're true. on stage. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, with a guy like Jacoby, just on that level, like, having to deal with all that it's like oh man that would be tough It'd be tough man i mean especially when you have a family like being away from your family it's like well what else am i gonna do mm -hmm. you know some guys work out some guys stay fit like caleb from Beartooth, he's like right? yeah that he he attributes all of his like fitness to like well i had to quit drinking to do this if i didn't quit drinking i've never would have done this never would have yeah. been in the shape that i'm in and and look what I mean, it did for him, him, dude. I mean, he oh, looked, dude, he yeah. looks, he looks so much better. But ironically he enough, he's had more problems with his voice now being healthier than he did when he was, uh, not when he was, you know, drinking and kind of partying a little bit. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm just saying the universe has funny ways of telling us things. I'm just yeah. saying like it, it's, but I feel bad, you know, for, I feel bad. It's for like, it's, it's interesting that you say that because I'm a huge Bill Murray fan and, uh, you know, like the other side of the coin from of of what was it? A, a, attack, attack, you know, so mm -hmm. the very early days, it was pretty much Johnny Frank and, and and Caleb were like the two main songwriters, you know. Right. And uh, Johnny Frank left at attack, attack. And then pretty much Caleb had to carry the load for like what, like the next like two or three albums or so, something like that, two albums. But uh, I went and saw Bill Murray in Little Rock just a couple months ago. And uh, he was talking about the whole reason why he started that was because he got severely depressed and was drinking himself into a severe depression and then quit drinking, got himself sober and pulled fit. his kind of, yeah, got himself somewhat fit and decided yeah. to start, you know, making that music mostly just for him to get out of his own head. And then people just latched onto it. So I would imagine that's kind of, I would have to be the same, at least to some degree, with Caleb, you know what I mean? Like you just kind of start taking care of yourself. You have these inner demons. You want to get them out. Right. It's the best way to do it. Yeah. With singers, them, it's, it's tricky too, because you have to, I mean, you just cannot sustain the party right. life and expect to sing well every night on tour. Um, Make sure that's why I, I think I find it funny with Caleb band, because he's like, it. just, you know, yeah. I mean, he's, He's found this new life, but I mean, I've, I've never read about, I've never heard about him having so much trouble. You yeah. know, the last time they were here, he, his voice was fucked. Yeah. And, uh, I felt so bad for him. I felt so bad for him, but he powered through, man. And I, I, that's the, the one thing I said about them, I love bad omens and bad omens. Mm -hmm. Were you at that show with them and data? Remember you did not. I was not. Okay. So like, 
it was a day to remember bear tooth and bad omens bad omens opened up bear tooth and a day to remember mm -hmm. and um it was at uh, uh, uh san Luis music park so big amphitheater right so always different for for the bands and for the crowd at bigger right. places like that especially an outdoor venue but um mm. uh i love bad omens they opened it up and it was my first time seeing them live and i enjoyed it but i was like jesus there are so many tracks going on like what's real what's not like who's doing what who's not doing what and don't get me wrong, I'm not a track hater. I'm not a boomer. I don't, it's fine. Right. Use tracks. We all did it. We all do it moving forward. It's fine. But then you saw a band like Beartooth, and Caleb's not having any help. He's right. letting you know, like, I'm struggling, but we're going to power through together. That whole thing. Mm -hmm. and I was like, well, good on him. He could have easily said, you know what? Give me some backing tracks. I'll take it easy when I know I can't hit shit. Let the track come <laughs> through. Who's going to know? Right. right. Um, and it was the huge difference I saw between those two bands. And again, I love them both, but I was like, well, who do I respect more in this situation? Probably Caleb. Right. And I'm not taking anything away from bad omens. They put right. on a great show. It was a good set and love the songs, but there were times where I was going, huh? What? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Like, but you know, we've all seen bring me the horizon. It, like what's the song? Uh, Spirit, uh, is it is it oh, called yeah. Spirit? Happy song, happy song, happy song. There, song yeah. There's yeah. like a there's like a two minute stretch in the song where you're like, no one on stage is singing, but there's vocals. Who cares? Let's just <laughs> let's just party, everybody. Like, so we've accepted it. I think some of us. So like, I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining about bad omens, but I respected in that moment. I respected Caleb more to not, you know, have a crutch, if you will. Right. Like, right. I'm gonna let I'm gonna allow people to see me not do well i guess and i'll be i be honest i was like i was saying to somebody who was there with me i'm like ah, that was me dude i probably would have cheated i probably would have used mm. the tracks and just <laughs> ran with it like because uh i hate myself and i don't want people to see me suck but yeah yeah you uh you mentioned bring me to the horizon so i don't remember what the guy's name was but um one of the guys from that band was on finn mckinty's podcast recently and he was talking I saw that about he was but i didn't see it and he was talking about Ollie and saying that Ollie didn't know how to sing up until like the Simp Eternal album. Like he's hmm. tone deaf and he's, he never sang before it, which I mean, I make sense. If you listen to those albums, he never sang, but it's so crazy to make it, you know, that far in your uh, music career and not know how to sing as the front man of a band. I've seen it. Do you remember Scary Kids, Scaring Kids, Mario? Yes, yes, I do. So we actually played a few times with them out of town and got to know them a little bit. And so Tyson, uh, rest in peace, um, is no longer with us. But the dude who was singing in that band when they got, you know, marginally popular, got on rock radio and stuff. Up to that point, right before they signed that deal, he had never sang a lick in his life. He played bass in the band never sang backups, never even attempted. And just one day he goes, guys, I'll try it. Whatever. Fuck it. And the band was more successful than ever. I was like, <laughs> I'll do it. Whatever. That's crazy. And that's the way they always told the story, you know, and he was not speaking of guys who partied. Oh, whew. Um, but yeah, he was just like, yeah, I'll try it. Why not? What? Like it took <laughs> me like 10 years to muster up the courage to be like, I know I could sing, but let me go ahead and try it. Like he's just yeah. like, one day was like, I'll just do it guys. It's fine. We'll be fine. Right. Straight.